Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How. And in today's video, we are working on the D-Max and it's all about recovery points. We're gonna suss out what the D-Max comes with from factory. We've got a couple of different versions here that we'll have a quick peek at, but ultimately, we're gonna be installing a set of ARB rated recovery points. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, rated recovery points isn't something we wanna muck around with. And if you're gonna be using your rig for any sort of off-roading, I definitely recommend that you invest in a set of rated recovery devices for front and for rear. Now for the rear, it's relatively easy. If you've got a tow bar, you're good to go. You just need to get one of these recovery hitches. You can get them pretty much everywhere. Just make sure you get a rated version. But for the front, for most four wheel drives, they don't come with proper rated recovery points. All we have is this guy here, and this is, this is a tow hook, and it is rated for towing purposes only. That's gonna get you out of trouble if you do need a flat tow, not that, Obviously the D-Max is gonna be breaking down or anything like that with these particular guys, but outside of that, there is no rated recovery point. The forces expended when you are doing recoveries, particularly snatch recoveries, are very different to a flat toe situation, mainly because of the shock load that's applied to the vehicle. And that's why it's important that you have something that is rated to handle that shock load. And that's where things like these guys come into play. Now, when it comes to recovery equipment, I don't muck around and I recommend you don't either. Safety is paramount in those recovery situations. So you don't wanna muck around with anything that hasn't been tested, hasn't been rated. Now, there's a bunch of different brands out there that do recovery points these are some of the best though these ones are from road safe they're really well designed soft shackle inputs there and nice and solid units more importantly these guys are rated to that four and a half ton aside which is excellent and then we have these guys here which is ultimately what we're going to install in just a second big chunky units rated to eight ton each the reason why i've gone with these as opposed to those is a couple of different quick reasons mainly because these are a direct bolt on bolt off unit no drilling required whereas these guys do require a little bit of drilling at the top there whilst drilling on the side each other is generally considered to be okay for me, the reversibility, as with everything else on the D-Max, like you've seen in all the videos, I really like the bolt-on, bolt-off stuff to be able to reverse it in the future if I need to. So ultimately, that's why we've gone with the ARBs. So I think, without further ado, let's rip open the bag, let's check out all the hardware, and let's get these guys installed on the front of the D-Max. So our first step is to grab all of our nuts and bolts, both of the recovery points, Grab your assortment of sockets, a ratchet, as well as a rattle gun if you've got one, and let's get everything underneath so we can get everything in position to bolt it all up. Now we're gonna focus on installing the driver's side recovery point. The good news is these guys are identical. So once we've installed this guy, you can just rinse and repeat installing the passenger side. Now the next step here is we need to remove our bash plates. Now in our case, like you've seen in the videos, we're running a set of the custom off-road jobbies. If you're running a set of bash plates, just make sure you remove those. If you're running still the factory two plates, you just need to remove those so we can get access up underneath. Once our bash plate is off, the next step we wanna do is grab our little stick nut here and we need to bend it to shape. And we wanna bend it so that it has a bit of a dog leg left, a bit of a bit of a chicane going on here. So just wanna bend it up a little bit like that. Make sure you, you bring, your, bring your strong hands and then it should look a little bit like that when you're done. And once you're all bent out of shape there, the next step is to bring this up underneath, find where your bottom control arm is you'll see the big connecting bolt there. And then next to it should be a little hole that looks a little bit like that. That's why we wanted to bend this because this guy needs to slot in there and sit down facing the front. So you should be able to just wiggle it into place and it should sit down. So you've got your tail hanging out the front. The reason for that is we have another little bolt hole here and that's where this nut is gonna connect when we bolt our bolt through that hole to connect our recovery point to that part of the chassis. All right, excellent. Once your, your tail nut is in and the tail's hanging out the front, the next thing we can do is we can grab our recovery point and we can kind of just test fit it. So how this is gonna go, it'll go on that way. This a little slot in the front, that is for our factory toe point. So it's pretty straightforward. It can only go on one way, so you can just slot it into place. That will slot in underneath there, over the top of our toe point in the front, a little bit like that. And then from here, we can start lining up all of our bolts and we can loosely bolt it into place. Now I recommend starting with one and two here. This guy here is an M10. You don't need a nut because it's already in as part of the crossbar here. And then this guy is an M12 with one of our flange nuts. So what that looks like is one of these guys with a washer and then your big M12 guy here with the M12 washer there. 
one of your flange nuts and when you poke it through our hole here you'll see that in the side you should have plenty of access down the channel there to loosely fit your flange nut. And there we go, we have these guys in position. You can see we're starting to get all lined up. There's our little flange nut in there. It's easy to sort of just get your fingers in there and line him up. Now it's important to keep them loose. We don't wanna tighten anything down crazy at the moment. This guy in particular needs to stay nice and loose because he's gonna to have to come back out when we slide our bash plates back into position. The next thing we need to do is get this guy in place. Now that is our big 60 mil one here. How this is going to look, that's going to go through there. And then if you have a look on the inside, this is a spacer that needs to sit in between your chassis rail and the recovery point itself. Right, so we're in there. It is a little bit finicky to get in your gap here with that washer, but just take your time and you'll get it in, no worries. We've got our two at the front in as well. And from here, we've only got two to go. So if we work our way down, down to the back here, you should see a couple of holes up underneath here. Now remember, here is our little tail that we installed earlier. That's gonna go through this guy here. And then this one is our factory position. And there we go, those are both in. You just need to wiggle your tail around to get this guy all into place. Once you're there, you can tighten these ones down. And that is this one all ready. So from here, I recommend starting on the next side. You wanna just rinse and repeat, exactly the same thing. Get everything irregular tight, not maniac tight. Once everything's in place, you can remove these little locating ones in the corners, getting ready to put your bash plates back in. But before you do, it's a matter of going around and talking everything to spec. And once you've done that, you can reinstall the bash plate. And once you're at this point and you've got one and two all installed, when you go to reinstall your bash plate, if you are using the factory ones, you may have to do a little bit of trimming on the factory bash plate. You'll see when you go to line it up what you'll need to trim out, just an angle grinder or some sort of a hacksaw will work fine. And righto, there we go. We are all back installed. Bash plate in position, ready for some bashing. We have our recovery points ready for recovering. I reckon from here, let's get it out into the daylight and let's check out how it looks. And here we go, we are all installed. What do you think? I reckon they look pretty good, super sturdy. I think the only thing wrong with these is they don't come in Scotty's favorite color blue, but never mind. They are in there and as you can see with the bash plates there, they, they tuck up nicely on the sides as well. So we're not sort of facing too much in the way of clearance issues. I do like the fact that they do come out a fair bit towards the front because when you are doing a recovery the last thing you want is it tucked right underneath here because if you're getting any sort of angles you don't want to be bashing anything against your bash plate or your bull bar of course massive thank you to the patrons of video show me how guys your extra support as always massively appreciated if you're interested in any of that sort of stuff guys head on over to the link we do try and do monthly or so giveaways over there as well so if you're interested check out the link in the video description down below but that's it for this video guys if you haven't seen the dmax build head on over and check that out we're 50 plus videos deep in the dmax build and all sorts of how to on how to install different bits and bobs on the rig so check that out if you haven't already ready. But other than that, guys, as always, I hope that you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.